Ready to try your hand at making your own instruments? Here's how I got started. When I was in the Peace Corps in Africa, I was so inspired by the ways music gathered everyone together and how everyone could participate by clapping, dancing, singing, or playing the drums, bells, and shakers that I decided I wanted to do that back home in Kentucky. But I didn't have any money to buy drums and ship them, so I took a page from the African playbook because almost all of their instruments were handmade. I'm going to show you some of my homemade instruments in each family, along with some instruments from other cultures. Then, I'll demonstrate how you can make a simple instrument yourself. In the idiophone family, here's a jill, a xylophone from Ghana, West Africa. It's a beautiful instrument with wooden bars suspended over gourds, which resonate and make the sound a little louder. Over here, we have the amadinda. This is a homemade instrument, but it's modeled after an instrument from Uganda. Let's see what it sounds like. Xylo means wood, by the way, so any instrument with wooden bars is called a xylophone. This instrument uses two by fours cut to different lengths and attached together, put up on top of pieces of foam, so the vibrations from the bars go out into the air instead of into the floor. To make one of these, you need to know how a bar or tube actually vibrates. We can't see the vibrations with our eyes. So let's do a science experiment to make the vibrations visible. We'll put some salt on one of the bars and tap it repeatedly in the middle like we were playing it. What do you think will happen to the salt? Were you surprised? Can you describe what happened? The salt has moved to two spots on the bar, called the nodes, here and here. It moved from the ends and from the middle toward those spots, and it looks like they're about one quarter of the way in from the end of the bar. In fact, they are 0.225, or 22.5% of the length of the bar. So if you're making your own xylophone, remember to put the pieces of wood up on some foam Swimming pool noodles work well, about a quarter of the way in from the end. And if you want to attach the bars to each other, as I've done, the nodes are where you drill those holes. You can also use metal to make idiophones. And here are some examples of a homemade gamelan instrument I've made, inspired by the music of Indonesia. These metal tubes are also attached at the nodes and cut to specific lengths to make a scale. Since they're metal and not wood, they're called metallophones, and they sound like this. Thumb pianos are another example of idiophone, and they use a bar anchored at one end to make sound, a sort of a vibrating tongue, if you will. Another name for these is linguaphones. Here are some examples from Zimbabwe, Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa, and one I've made called the Kentucky Kalimba for Two, designed for two players at once. So, the next time you pick up a piece of wood or metal, if you hold it at the node or anchor it at one end, you can probably get some music out of it.
I remember meeting a retired carpenter at a festival. He took one look at my homemade xylophone and said, I've been working with wood for 50 years and I never knew there was music in it. He said he was headed straight home to make a xylophone for his grandkids. All you need to get started on this project is some pieces of wood or metal and a little foam to set them up. Have fun. And remember, try this at home. Some of the most beautiful instruments in the world are chordophones. There's something so elegant about a stretched string suspended over a resonating cavity. This family presents some of the most interesting architecture of the instrument world, and a number of those string instruments originated or developed right here in Kentucky. I've built a few unusual chordophones myself, like this tromba marina, or marine trumpet. It was a medieval string instrument used to make the sound of a brass choir. Let's have a listen. I can't really tell if that's what a medieval brass choir sounded like, but I added some decorative waves and a rain stick inside of mine to at least hint at the marine part. You can put a string on just about anything else that will resonate or vibrate along with the string, like a box or even a solid piece of wood. If the string is stretched tight, but not too tight, test as you tune, you should be able to hear its vibration in the air and in its resonator. I like to use found objects to make instruments, and my favorite material for string instruments is driftwood from the Ohio River, because it's pre-sanded. All I have to do is drill some holes for tuning pins or screws or nails, attach a string, in this case music wire, tune it up to some pitches that I like, and play it. I'll use this driftwood bow to demonstrate. It has fishing line for hair. Or how about this drift tar? This was a discarded piece at an instrument building workshop and it's turned out to be my favorite. Now, have you ever heard a driftwood koto inspired by its Japanese namesake? The easiest chordophone might be made using rubber bands and a cardboard box. You can experiment by adding a bridge, like this pencil, and separating the strings, or rubber band, into two different pitches. This little cardboard dulcimer came with a numbered fretboard, so you can actually play a tune. Here's my homemade set of West African drums, modeled after the drums made by the Eve people in Togo and Ghana. These drums form a family themselves, with the elders, grandma and grandpa, if you will, and the rest of the family. Dad, mom, and the kids. To make my versions of these drums, I started with either a hollow trunk of a tree or with some large plumbing pipe, sanded and stained to look like wood. 
I cut some cow skin or rawhide to fit the top of the drum with enough extra to fold over a metal ring so the skin could be tightened. Using hardware store eye bolts and some heavy metal cable, I threaded loops around the head and through the eye bolts. When the bolts are tightened down, the skin gets pulled tighter and the pitch goes up. Then the family of drums can be tuned so their rhythmic conversations are easy to hear. In West Africa, most of the drums use a peg system to tighten the skin. Another unique drum present in African music cultures is the talking drum, or dano. This drum is shaped like an hourglass, and it has two heads attached by strings going back and forth. When the strings are squeezed, usually under your arm, the heads tighten and the pitch goes up. This is the first talking drum I brought back with me from Togo. And here is my homemade version, using plumbing pipe reducing connectors and string trimmer cord for the strings, with again some cow skin or rawhide and wooden rings for the head. Making drums can be a little complicated, especially if you're working with animal skins. The skins require some advanced preparation, soaking in water, cutting to size, and cutting the holes for tightening them. But some simple drum-like idiophones can be made which are great to play. An empty plastic bucket makes a pretty good drum. And if you have some thin plywood, you can make a cajon or a box drum. Here's a set of three cajons I made, along with a pair of box bongos and a cascara, or timekeeper, all out of one sheet of 3 8 inch plywood, plus a little thinner quarter inch plywood for the drum heads. But if all you have is a coffee can and a pencil, try playing it like this. And if you're looking for that talking drum sound, but still only have your coffee can, add a little water. Tap it on the bottom with your pencil and tilt the can slightly. When air moves in a tube or across a sharp edge, it makes a vibration, a pitch. People around the world have figured out so many ways to use this fact. A couple of my favorites include the didgeridoo, which came from the aboriginal people in Australia. The didgeridoo is an instrument that's played like a trumpet or trombone, buzzing the lips inside a hollow tube. But it also uses circular breathing to continue its sound over several breaths for a normal person. No one ever said playing a hollow tube was going to be easy. To make your own didgeridoo, you can use plumbing pipe in the one and a quarter inch size and put a mouthpiece on the end of softened beeswax. And then there's the Hawaiian nose flute. By the way, sharing flutes is not always a good idea. The easiest kind of wind instrument you can build actually doesn't require you to blow through it at all. It's a bull roarer, also used by the Australian Aborigines and the first people on the land where we live, Native Americans. The bull roarer is a simple sound-making device that uses two edges to cut through the air and make a buzzing or roaring sound. Here's how you make one. 
take a paint stick, drill a hole in one end, put a string through it, and tie a loop, a knot with a little bit of space. I like to tie the same kind of loop on the other end for my fingers to have something to hang on to. To play it, all you have to do is swing it in the air. But remember, your first step is always to look around. If it doesn't start right away, try swinging it the other direction. If you want to make a flute, you'll need a hollow tube closed on one end. One hole is close to the closed end, and that's the hole you'll blow across. This one. At the other end, you'll need some finger holes. These can be of many different sizes and positions, depending on what sort of scale you want your flute to play. For this homemade flute, I used plumbing pipe and a cork to close the end, some non-toxic finish to make it look a little more like bamboo or wood, and a South Indian scale design for the finger holes. To demonstrate this, I'll play the C major scale for you. And now, an Indian scale. Another style of flute is the recorder style, using what's called a fipple mouthpiece. That means all you have to do is blow into it and move your fingers, but they're a little harder to make than the transverse flute that you just heard. So let me demonstrate a few for you. This, of course, is our standard recorder. This one is a Choctaw flute, which I learned about during several trips to the Choctaw Reservation in Mississippi. I took those trips in honor of my great-great-grandmother, who was Choctaw. This flute is made from river cane, and it sounds like this. This next style of flute comes from Indonesia, and it's called a suling, made with bamboo and with a slightly different style of fipple. The suling plays beautiful melodies and also sometimes adds what sound like bird songs to traditional gamelan music. Reed instruments, like the oboe and the saxophone, use a vibrating reed placed in the column of air to generate sound waves. Accordions and harmonicas use this trick too. But if you only have a single blade of grass, you can still make your own reed instrument. Just put it between your thumbs and blow. And if you don't even have a blade of grass, remember, you've got a great wind instrument with you at all times. <laughs> 